Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with adding OpenTelemetry based logging in your .NET applications. Now OpenTelemetry is not a .NET specific thing, it is just how everyone in the computing space has sort of agreed on how we're doing metrics, traces and logging. And .NET is one of the very early adopters of the project. The project now is a cloud native foundation project, everything is absolutely using it and basically every company out there is either using it or moving to that. So you should know how to use it in your .NET applications. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do it both with the built-in iLogger, but also with Serilog. And we're actually going to see how you can push the logs into an environment and then visualize them as well. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple web API. It doesn't really have much. It's your typical web-based API, but I've changed it a bit. What I've done is I added a city as a parameter. So when you hit the endpoint to get the weather, you say, give me the weather for this city. And you can also ask for the amount of days of the forecast you might need. So do you need it, for example, today, just pass one. Do you need five days, then pass five? And that's sort of the idea. And if I go very quickly and I just run this application and then I go to Insomnia and I call this and say, give me the weather for Paris, for example, I'm getting the weather for Paris. Very simple, if I change it for, let's say, uh, five days, then I get the same thing and so on. It's all in memory generated. And the point of having this is just for the demo. Now, adding simple logging in the application is very simple. In fact, if I just run it again, you might have seen that we already have logs and this is .NET's built-in structured logging. In fact, ASP.NET Core, which is what this API is running on, has it by default. And that's because the create builder will add it for us. In fact, if I go in the create builder and I search for logging, uh, then you're going to see that we should have a logging call. Here you go. We're going to configure a login factory and we're going to start creating the logger and then integrate everything in that. So it's auto registering it, but you don't have to auto register it uh, because you do have access to the logger factory uh, so you can create your own uh, loggers if you want based on the type or not based on the type this is just general common dotnet stuff so i'm not going to focus on that i want to focus more on the open telemetry stuff for that reason i'm going to go straight into the point which is well if you want to add open telemetry you actually have to add the NuGet packages for that in your application because since dotnet knows how to just write some logs somewhere what we need to do is find a way to transform those logs that .NET is already collecting with the built-in logger into what OpenTelemetry accepts, that commonly agreed standard. Now to showcase all that, we need to have a log in the first place. So I'm going to say inject the I logger for program. So we're going to inject that here. And I'm going to simply say that logger.log information, and I'm going to say retrieved how many weather forecasts for city. This is the structured logging approach. Uh, you should not use string interpolation here. You should just use the parameters as you see them. This is called the message template. And these parameters will be also captured as parameters as well as being replaced when this log is invoked. In fact, if I go ahead and I say run this and I go and I call that endpoint again, as you're going to see, this will look like they are replaced. However, these parameters are also captured as individual values, allowing us to do querying or alerting or anything you might really want to do here. Now, with that in place, I want to show you the absolute simplest way to add open telemetry in some capacity in your application. And to do that, we're going to go to NuGet and we're going to say open telemetry dot exporter dot. And now you have a few exporters, means of exporting your already captured logs because this is building on top of the built-in uh, logger that we have in .NET. And I'm going to say just console just to showcase this to start with. So I'm going to say add the opentelemetry.exporter.console new git package. And with that in place, all I need to do is go up here and say builder.logging. And what I want to do is I want to clear all the existing login providers. So the existing console provider and the debug and everything um, to give me a clean slate. And then I'm going to say builder.logging.add open telemetry and i'm going to specify that i want to use the add console exporter because open telemetry works with the concept of exporters meaning things that export to open telemetry or in the format of open telemetry and once i have that that's all i need i'm going to say just run and now logging changes it's no longer the same thing as it was before this one liner now it has this more 
intricate and detailed way you can see all the resources associated with this log record. We can see the telemetry SDK name, we can see the version, we have so, so much captured information. You can see more log attributes here. For example, the original format is captured here. And if I go and I say, give me the weather again, then as you're going to see, my log looks very different. Now it looks like this. I have the date, timestamp, trace and span as well. Those IDs in case I want to do some correlation, uh, severity, and then in the end, the body. But I also have the attributes of the log record captured and I can see that very explicitly. I have the weather count, which is five. I have the city, which is Paris. And then I have the original format, which is basically the message template I used. Now for the console, this isn't a great experience, but it sort of visualizes how much information the open telemetry format is capturing and we can utilize if we want to push that somewhere. Uh, but we actually have to push that somewhere. And to do that, we are not going to use the console exporter because console logs in general slow down the application to begin with. And also they're not being saved anywhere. So we want to actually save them and also display them. So for that reason, I'm going to say open telemetry exporter and add an extra NuGet package and say open telemetry protocol. So the exporter I want is the protocol itself. What does that mean? Well, it means I can actually go here and I can say that now I want to add an OTLP exporter. And in fact, because I want to instrument my application even further with more details, because I know this is an ASP.NET Core application, I'm also going to add the Open Telemetry instrumentation ASP.NET Core package. And this will collect more stuff from ASP.NET Core and add that to the logs we're going to send to OpenTelemetry. Now, to configure the exporter details, all we want to say is go here and then specify where we want to export those logs towards. So we have to specify an endpoint of the service we're going to push them into, and that's going to be a URI. Then we want to specify the protocol, which in this case is going to be a HTTP protobuf. We also support a gRPC, by the way. And then because we want to authenticate with what we're going to be pushing those logs into, uh, we also need to pass a header value. Now, before I show you the header value, I have to specify what we're going to be using to visualize those logs. And the thing we're going to be using is SEC. You might have heard of SEC before. I've heard people pronounce it as SIC as well. I don't really know how you pronounce it. I think it's SEC. And SEC is actually a project which is made from the people who made Serilog. So I'm just going to run this in Docker, which you can do. I'm going to say, go ahead and run it. And then I'm going to go to the portal, which is this one. And I'm going to go to settings. And then I'm going to create an API key because I need a key to authenticate in my service and actually push those logs. So I'm going to say just demo. And then I have to copy this API token. Once you close this window, you won't see this ever again. Uh, but as you can see, we have no logs over here right now. But if I go back here and I say now, hey, I'm going to push this header with this value, which is the API key I just created. And I'm going to push it into the default interest endpoint for logs, which is this one for open telemetry. So the local host, because that's where it's running, the port, and then ingest OTLP v1 and then logs. And that is it. That is the minimum amount of configuration you need. And just to see that, what I'm going to do is just run it and go in sec and the application now is starting. Uh, and as it's starting, if you remember, it's logging, hey, the, the app started. And we can actually see this in real time or almost real time right here. As you can see, I can click on this and I can see all of these details now, the telemetry language, the service name, the name, the content route, all these details captured. And I can go and say, hey, I want to use this thing maybe as part of a query to see everything that environment name is development. I can do that and then I can see it here. I can use it for filtering and then I can go here and say Paris, 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 then Paris for one day, then maybe Paris for two days. Then let's do London for two days, then London for three days, then London for five days. And if we go back and I return this into real time, as you can see, it is showing up as things are happening. So I can say, give me all the requests for Paris where the weather requested, the dates requested uh, is to. Well, I can say the city is um, Paris and weather count equals two. And I can query for that. That's how quickly it is to integrate your app with Open Telemetry and also push these Open Telemetry logs into something that can accept them. And because that's a common standard, as long as you have a consistent way of doing your authentication and then obviously your URL over here to push it somewhere, anything that supports the standard 
can accept this. Your code doesn't have to change. Now, if you want to know more about all this in way more detail on Dometrain, we have a massive course on OpenTelemetry, which covers way more than login. We see traces, span, metrics, so, so much more. And the first 100 of you can use discount code telemetry20 at checkout to get 20% off that course. It's an amazing course. Every developer needs to take it. But this information that we're pushing is just the bare minimum. We can actually expand this way further with OpenTelemetry because we can attach a lot of stuff with the logs we're pushing, a lot of information. Now that in OpenTelemetry is called resources. So what I can say here is I can say that I want to set a resource builder and I can say resource builder dot create empty. And then I can say that I want to add the service name, for example, which is going to be where the service and it will override any default. And then I want to say that I want to add some attributes. So the attributes can be a key value pair or a dictionary, and I'm going to pass them down. And what I'm going to say is, for example, I want to pass down the environment. So deployment.environment, which I can get from builder.environment.environment name. In fact, I can get application name as well from that parameter, but I want to control it. That's why I used this one over here. And that is it. And I can also include more login context. I can go here and say include scopes because the .NET built-in login provider also supports scopes and also include formatted messages. And once I do that, let's go ahead and just run the application again and go back to Insomnia and just push a few more requests. Here we go and then clear all that, try to see them again. And as you can see, immediately they're available. And if I click on this now, you can see we have the service name, past weather service, more context. Uh, we have more information about the deployment environment. And we also have the service instance ID, which we did not have. In fact, if you compare this log and this log, it's night and day. We have so, so much more. We have the connection ID. We have the parent ID, we have the request ID, we have way, way, way more context. And you can keep pushing context. You can have scopes, you can have everything you want, it's fantastic. And you don't have to use SEC to visualize this. No matter which service you use, if it is built for open telemetry, it will capture these logs in that way and allow you to create them, show them, and do many, many cool things. You can even, for example, visualize parameters over here, like say weather count, and I can say count by value. So I had six requests that wanted five days, seven that wanted two days, one for three and one for one. It's really, really cool. But what if you don't want to use the built-in log provider and you want to use Serilog because Serilog is really, really cool. It supports many syncs. You can do really, really cool stuff with it. So what if you want to use Serilog? Well, it's actually quite easy. The first package you need is the serilog.extensions.logging and add Serilog on top of it and redirect all your logs. Now, once we add that, we don't need this anymore. However, I will comment it out and let you uh, grab it from the description down below if you want. And what I have to say to integrate Serilog is the following. I want to configure a few things about the static global logger. That's how Serilog works. Uh, but I also have to use the console sync just to show you what is happening behind the scenes. Uh, and sync is what Serilog is calling where you can push your logs into. Uh, so we're going to use the console one over here. And then I'm going to say just dot create logger. And then I'm also going to add the serilog.aspnet core package, which also allows me to integrate with ASP.NET Core and add more information about my logs. And then I can say builder.services.add serilog. So I'm going to just set this up here. And remember, I removed open telemetry. So I'm going to run this to show you how your logging experience in the console will change. So we have a different look and feel, but everything is still the same in regards to what's being captured. So you still have the same structured logging approach over here. You can actually see some details about the requests as well, which is really, really cool. But this is not open telemetry. In order to add open telemetry for Serilog, what you need to do is add the serilog.syncs.opentelemetry NuGet package. And it works very, very similar to how it used to work with the built-in provider. Basically, all the configuration you need to do is on this global logger. So we can actually write to multiple locations, both the console and the sec. So I'm going to say write to open telemetry. And then I'm going to pass down all the configuration. It's the same thing. We have the endpoint, we have the header, and then we have some details. So that's what the configuration for that looks like. It's the exact same thing. I haven't really changed anything. And if I simply go ahead and say, run this, and then I go and I send a few requests. So three days, two days, Paris, then we still see everything 
in the console, but when I go to SEC and I say run this live again, I see all this information coming from Serilog, so much more stuff captured. And if I even click here, you see the same connection ID, request ID, we have all the telemetry clients, we have the weather count, we have everything still. So whether you're using the built-in logger provider or Serilog, it doesn't really matter because the standard is the standard. So any service that accepts the standard will accept this and visualize it. As always, the code is in the description down below. And there's so, so many places we can take this even to the cloud. So if you want to see more about Omni Telemetry, leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.